Hey there, I'm your host Les Sawi, and in today's video I will show you how to create an NPC that will follow you when you enter a specific location. So for the purpose of this video, I have a house which technically belongs to this guy and if I enter it, he won't like it and he will follow me. So let's say we are here and if I remain within the house, he'll continue to follow me. But if I leave after three seconds, he'll continue to random roam. And of course, you can have whatever code you want after you've left the house. And with that said, let's begin. Open up your project and let's go to our content drawer. Now over here, you want to go to your AI, which I already have created. And if we go to the viewport, we want to add a component, which is known as pawn sensing. Now this will allow our NPC to look at our player. And for the sensing interval, I want to set it to 0 0.1. And this simply means it's going to fire, uh, fire every 0.1 seconds. And for the peripheral vision, maybe 70 will be good for me. I think that's fine. So once you've done that, go to the event graph. And over here, you want to right click on the pawn sensing, add event, add on C pawn. And simply here, we will just have our code. But for our code, we need to create a branch and we need to have a condition. And for the condition, I need a variable, which I will get from my player character. So go into the contents drawer, go to your player, player character, which for me is Brady. And inside here, create a variable called is inside. And that's all you have to do. Let's compile, save and exit. So back inside of our NPC, what we want to do on pawn sensing, we want to cast to Brady or whatever your player character's name is, just like so, then the object would be get player character. And that's going to be that. So from here, I want to get my branch and as BP Brady, let's do get is inside, if I can spell it correctly, and plug that into the condition, just like so. And on true, we would have our sequence. So hold down S and left mouse button, which will get you the sequence. And on zero, we would have AI move to, just like that. And of course, the pawn being ourselves, which is the NPC. And for the target actor is the pawn that we are looking at, just like so. And yeah, then from one, we would have a retriggable delay, which would happen after this is completed. And let's say we set this to three or four seconds, like I had at the beginning. And over here, we can have either AI move to again, or we can have a different code. And for that, I'm going to use my roaming code, which I have over here. And I'm not casting it at the begin play. I simply want him to roam after I've been inside the house and after he's seen me. So over here, after I leave the house, he'll continue to do his roam. And of course, if he would see me again, he'd continue to uh, follow me. So I believe um, that's all that we have to do in the NPC. So let's just compile and save. And we need to create our house actor. So for that, go back into the contents drawer, create a new folder, preferably calling it house. And inside of here, we will create a blueprint class actor and call this BP underscore house. And over here, we don't need to create anything aesthetic. We just need a simple box collision, just like so. Even we can leave it as box, or call it house. And in the event graph, we can get rid of these guys. We can right click on the house, add event, add on component begin overlap, and we want to do same, the, the same with the end overlap. So from other actor, you would simply cast to your player character, which for me is Brady. And let's duplicate this guy, just like so. And then as BP Brady, we are setting is inside to be true. And on the end overlap, we would set that to be false. So I can simply copy it. And one more thing we can do, if we want a visual confirmation that we're inside or outside, from here, let's get a print string. And we can say inside. And if we copy paste, we can say outside. Let's me, let me do that outside. And yeah, compile, save. And if this works, that means everything's done correctly. So let's hope it does work. And then for this box, it's a little small. So let me make it 11 by 11 by 11. That should give us a nice big square. 
and let me just adjust it with the house. Uh, it's a little big, but it'll do the trick. So for the big test, let's see if this works. So if I hit play, he of course sees me. If we get inside his house, he won't be too happy. He'll run after me and he'll continue to chase me. And if I leave, uh, I think I messed something up because he continues to chase me. But if I leave, uh, he's not chasing me anymore. So let's see what was that all about. Okay, so over here we can actually add a character movement speed. And this will uh, make him not follow us as fast. So character movement, set speed. And let's set the max walk speed to be something like 400. And another thing we could do is for the acceptance radius of how close he can get to us, let's set this to 75. And with that said, let's compile once again and test how this looks. So I'm walking about and if I get inside, he'll be angry. And of course, he'll stay there for a little while. And if we leave, he should um, start to random roam after three seconds. So that's working perfectly for us. So guys, thank you so much for watching. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike. And as always, happy developing.